Interested to know how the Toronto real estate market is going to do in 2021? Today, I'm going to review how we did in 2020, and I'm going to give you my outlook for 2021, and I'm going to let you know what my thoughts are as to where you should be spending your investment dollars. So stick around. Hi, welcome back to my videos. The best place for buyers, sellers, landlord, and tenant to learn about all things real estate. My name is Steven Sun at Homes by Sun with Remax, and I'm a 20-year veteran uh, in the Toronto real estate market. And I'm also an investor myself. So today, not only am I going to review with you the latest uh, data released by the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board for 2020. I'm also going to let you know what my thoughts are as an investor uh, or as a user of where the market is going to head in 2021 and where you should be looking at spending your investment dollars. Before I begin, I want to wish every single one of you Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. And I hope 2021 will be a much better year for you and your family. And I hope all of you are doing well. If I say 2020 was an odd year, that would not be an understatement. I think a lot of you will agree with me. Not only did we have the start of the pandemic, we also had a lot of businesses that were forced to shut down. Um, either temporary or permanently, we had massive layoffs. So therefore record unemployment. We had a lot of people not coming into Canada due to travel restrictions. However, as the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board record shows that 2020 was our third best historically. So what happened? A lot of people predicted that there would have been a um, market crash after the expiry of the mortgage deferral, but obviously that didn't happen. So by December of 2020, on record, there were about 95,000 transactions on the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. By comparison, our best year was 2016. And in 2016, there were about 113,000 transactions. So in 2020, we did only about 16% less transaction than our best year. And that's despite the raging pandemic and all the economic challenges that I mentioned before. And if we look at the average home price, as of December 2020, the average home price went up to $930,000. And that's about a 13.5% increase over December of 2019. That is a record high. Just for comparison, back in 2017, in April, that was the height of the previous height of the market. The average home price was about $920,000. So we are at a higher peak than the height of before. And that just shows how resilient, how strong the Toronto real estate market is. What I think happened was in 2020, there was a great shift of uh, living requirements and living priorities. Um, before the pandemic, a lot of the younger generations, they were more keen to rent a rent or buy a condo in downtown and live the downtown life. And a lot of the older generations were downsizing, capitalizing on the equity in their home downsizing to maybe a condo or maybe a townhouse and taking the equity out and enjoying their life. That all changed in 2020 as people realized that they needed more space because now they're stuck at home with maybe their kids or they have to work from home. And if it's, it's a couple living in a one bedroom apartment, that's no longer enough for both of them to be working from home. So there was a great shift of requirements. People uh, who were thinking about downsizing also paused their plans because now they are not so keen as to moving into a large uh, condo complex and living amongst hundreds of other people. So overall, the market shifted towards low density homes. In fact, before 2020, Toronto has the largest number of cranes in the sky amongst all of the metro, uh, major metropolitan 
uh, US and Canadian cities combined. So we had somewhere around 130, 140 cranes in the sky all throughout the city. There were so many projects that were planned, but when the pandemic hit, a lot of these projects were um, either delayed or canceled completely. Compound that with the fact that a lot of universities are holding virtual classes instead of in-person classes, and uh, the slow, the travel with the travel restrictions, a lot of the Airbnb units were also affected. They were effectively, um, no one was renting them, so they had to be put on long-term uh, rental market. That drove up the supply of condominium, um, also pushed everyone towards lower density um, homes. So you can see that of the 95,000 transactions that, that we did on the Toronto Real Estate Board, majority of it was for higher end product. Generally, townhouses, semis, and detached homes are priced at a uh, little bit higher price point than condos. What about mortgage deferral expiration and mortgage delinquencies? Many were predicting that people would be um, liquidating their properties because they can't catch up on their deferred mortgage. Don't forget that many people are very resilient and even though they've lost their job, they were able to find other ways to make money. Uh, the start of uh, a lot many online businesses can making product to sell or they're starting their own shop elsewhere with the rent that's lower now they're able to be their own boss so people are losing jobs but there, many jobs are being created at the same time combine that with government spending uh, government financial assistance and the ultra conservative financial system that's in in canada it's not a surprise that we are not seeing the major real estate market crash uh, like what happened in 2018, uh, 2008, 2009 in the US with a subprime mortgage. Overall, 2020 turned out to be not so bad for majority of the people. Many landlords were still able to find tenants even though, even though they may have to reduce the rent a little bit but if they're able to carry the mortgage, then they're not selling and they're still renting it out. And uh, many people were able to find uh, good deals on the homes that they wanted to buy or be able to move up to a bigger property, get more space. So it wasn't a bad year for overall uh, of the Toronto real estate market. Now going into 2021, I have a few predictions that I'm gonna share with you. The first one is, I think condo will rebound. Um, condominium, uh, especially the rent, have gone down significantly during 2020. And uh, a lot of tenants who were priced out of living in downtown Toronto are suddenly finding themselves the golden opportunity to live downtown for maybe $1,500 to $2,000 a month. A lot of these units, especially studio or one bedroom unit, at the height of the rental market, they were going for about $2,100 to $3,000. Right now, you can find a one plus one downtown condo for rent for under $2,000. So that's making a lot of millennials, a lot of uh, younger generations eager to get their own space, get into their own place. So the rental market what I, from what I've seen, has actually rebounded. We are getting a lot more inquiries. Units are renting out faster, even though uh, perhaps dollar-wise, they're not getting the rent that they were getting before the pandemic. However, we're able to rent out unit a little bit faster uh, than during 2020. So what that means is, as tenants starting to move back into the market, Landlord, even though they may not be able to get the rent that they were getting before the pandemic, they're still able to rent out their unit to cover some of the costs. So they're not fire selling the unit. As more unit gets absorbed by the rental market, um, prices will start to stabilize and may, the rental price may uh, creep up a little bit more and that will attract more investor back into the condo market. So I think overall, the condo uh, market will rebound in 2021. In terms of the lower density market, 
Uh, what I'm predicting is in the next three months, we are going to see um, a greater increase in price as a lot of people who delayed their move last year are right now wanting to make a move before they think there might be a crazy spring market. So between January and March, I would say after March break, we should see a greater increase in prices than uh, say later on in the year. But overall in 2021, I predict that we continue to see um, year to year increase of around eight to 10 percent. Um, if we will look at price of uh, 2020, uh, December 2020 compared to price of December 2021, I think there will be about eight to 10 percent increase on the average home price. And my third prediction has to do with uh, um, some of the recent inquiries, some of the recent questions that I've been receiving from my investor friends. Um, they are looking at maybe some videos showing that uh, 2021 should be a cautious year, um, market may drop. What I have to say is I would generally disagree because their, um, those videos, their comments uh, are generally talking about all of Canada. Now, all of Canada, obviously there will be pockets that may uh, drop in prices, but if we look at the historical uh, immigration uh, factors where one third of the immigrant into Canada are choosing to locate in Toronto and the prospect that Canada is going to accept more immigrant this year, we can see that there will be a significant uh, increase in population in, in GTA. So if you are a landlord right now uh, with multiple units and you cannot rent out, um, perhaps you could, you, sh you could look at selling uh, a couple of them. But if you are able to weather the storm, I think with the influx of immigration and the reopening of the economy towards later half of uh, 2021, you'll see an influx of people wanting to come into Canada. Another factor to look at is in terms of political stability, uh, financial system strength, and uh, economic opportunities, Canada might not be number one in all three of uh, the areas, but if you combine those three areas with our health system and the way that Canada has fared during the pandemic, how we handle it, I think I'm pretty safe to say that when the pandemic slowly disappears, Canada will come out to be one of the top countries that people will want to move to. Um, we have a very stable financial system and that's what's lacking in many countries and our political climate is rather stable as well. We don't have a lot of riots, we don't have a lot of uh, instability. So I think overall Canada is poised to attract a lot of people that want to come in and a third, like I said before, a third of them will want to pick uh, GTA. So if you have a property or you think about investing in GTA, I still think in the next three to five years, you will be in a very good position to have um, a good uh, gain in your investment. Number four is if you are someone that's looking to upsize or downsize in 2021, I think you should do it sooner rather than later. What we're going to see is a lot of people who defer their plans for 2020 are starting to pick up their play, pace and uh, restart their plan for 2021. So um, we may see more detached homes come onto the market, um, but those will be quickly absorbed by uh, people looking for more space. So my prediction is we're going to, you, you're going to do a lot better uh, if you start early in the year rather than later in the year when the prices are going to be a, a bit higher. So finally, where should you put your investment dollars? Um, for 2021, I'm going to recommend you looking at midtown areas um, where Young, uh, Young Subway Line and the Eglinton LLT meets. I think that pocket is going to explode in the next few years because a lot of the units there do come with parking. 
Um, so you can look at that and all the way uh, up into North York area. Parking will become uh, very favorable for a lot of tenants and a lot of buyers in the future because they don't want to get stuck in a crowded subway anymore. A lot of people that I've spoken to are moving towards getting their own vehicle even though they may not use it all the time but they want the freedom to have their own space again. So condo with parking or condo with a little bit more room will be more favorable. The other thing you can look at is townhouses. I think the next trend in terms of renting for a lot of renters will be townhouse units, especially luxury townhouse units. We are seeing them renting for $4,000, some of them $4,500 to $5,000. These kinds of prices rival a lot of detached homes. A lot of detached homes you don't even get around $4,000, but if you are in the market, if you have a little bit more budget, have a look at higher end, newer townhouses. I think that's where the next wave of tenants are going to want to rent because that, the townhouses give them a little bit more space and it, uh, for some, uh, they don't need to worry about maintaining the outside. A lot of don't want to do the outside maintenance. So it's got the best of both worlds. Um, so that's where I think you should look at. In terms of areas, a couple of areas that I, um, I want to uh, maybe point out will be downtown Vaughan. Um, usually before uh, the pandemic, I would rarely recommend anything outside of Toronto proper, Toronto proper, so south of uh, Steeles. But right now I'm seeing a trend that a lot of people are moving out of Toronto because they're working from home, yet they still want to be in a condo. So take a look at downtown Vaughan and downtown Markham. I think those two areas will become quite popular in the next couple of years as people want uh, to have the accessibility of, let's say the big box stores or more open space when they want to go on trails, parks, yet they don't want to own a house, they will be looking at downtown Markham or downtown Vaughan areas. So that was a quick look at how we did in the Toronto uh, real estate market in 2020 and also uh, my prediction for 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you were in the market for an investment property, what type of property will be your choice. And also if you have any ideas of what type of videos you want to see me make, please let me know uh, below and I will do my best to make them. Again, my name is Steven Sun at Homes by Sun with Remax. We are big, big supporter of the Children's Miracle Network and also the Sick Kids Hospital. Whenever you or your fro work with us, a portion of our professional fee will be donated to these organizations to help the next generation for a better future. Thank you so much for watching once again. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. And I wish every one single one of you a, a, a great 2021 and stay safe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.